Hi, I'm Tim Berglund. And I'm Neha Pawar. We want to talk to you about tiered storage in StarTree Cloud, but rather than dive into the technical details of how it works, we've made a separate video for that, we want to talk to you about kind of the motivations and economics behind it. Let's start with the idea of an event. Now, an event is most valuable right when it's happened. It tells us at that point the most, we can make the most true statements about the world based on that event right then. As time goes on, more and more events happen out in the world that maybe we're not observing, and that event tells us less and less, okay? So an event is more valuable right when it happens. It's also the case when you think about stored events that recent data tends to be queried more frequently than old data, all right? So there's, there's more value in it. We hit it more often. That means it's sensitive to latency. We need those things to be very, very fast. And it justifies more investment in the infrastructure that stores those recent events because there's more value there. We're willing to spend more to, to get queries out of it. Well, similarly, historical data tends to be queried much less often. And also the historical data tends to be larger and it'll keep getting bigger and bigger all the time. But this doesn't mean that the latency is not important. We still want our database to be really fast. But the cost becomes a more dominating factor and we become more sensitive to the cost because of the reduced frequency of querying for that data. So to summarize, recent data is more valuable and extremely latency sensitive and queried more frequently. And historical data is large, cost sensitive and tends to be queried less frequently. Let's apply this to two categories of databases that exist today. First, real-time analytics databases like Druid, ClickHouse and our favorite Apache Pinot. Systems like these tend to be tightly coupled where they have their storage and compute together. And this is great because it provides really good access speed latencies. So we can have disks or SSDs which are either local instance storage or remote attached. But on the downside, you can only put so much storage on these local attached storage. So after a point, just to keep up with your storage volumes, you need to keep adding compute and then your cluster is going to get super expensive because you're going to have to scale one because you can't keep up with the other and vice versa. To summarize, in tightly coupled systems, we use local disks and SSDs and the access speed of those tends to be really fast in milliseconds. And that's because the access method for such storage is POSIX APIs. So the data is locally available. You can use uh, techniques like M mapping and that makes your data access super fast. Uh, on the downside, the access availability for such uh, storage is bound to a single instance. And also, let's say that the cost factor is expensive. Let's say it is X. And we're going to kind of baseline this to X and compare it with other storage options we'll use later. And we'll see what, what those are in terms of X. Mm -hmm. Another way to say this, and we might graph it, uh, would be to say that as data size or data retention, you know, the size of historical data increases, latency in a tightly coupled system stays small and grows at a, at a low slope or may even be flat. Uh, so that is a relatively flat line. Cost to serve that data starts small, because you could start with just a small cluster, but it goes up uh, at a kind of a not advantageous slope as the size of the data increases. So you can see uh, the trade-off we're making there, speed for money. Now let's look at the other category of database systems that we have. And these are the modern data warehouses and query federation technologies like Spark, Presto, Trino, and so on. These use a completely decoupled approach. So the compute nodes are completely decoupled from the storage and the storage that they use tends to be cloud object storage. And this is great uh, because the cloud object storage is extremely cheap. So the way we had cost X here for tightly coupled systems with using cloud object storage, the cost goes down drastically to a fifth of an X or even lesser. And the availability, that's also great because these are now available across all the instances, so, so they are shared. But on the flip side, these tend to be give us slower access speeds. So what used to be a POSIX API is now a network call. And because of that, uh, we went from a few milliseconds to hundreds of milliseconds. Yeah, and again, this is the cloud storage you were just telling us about. There we are. And to look at our graph again, to summarize this in graph form, uh, we have a different set of trade-offs being made here in the decoupled storage system. Uh, in this case, as data retention grows, 
latency is still relatively constant, but always high. Uh, there just isn't a way to get low latency or real-time queries out of that system. On the other hand, storage costs are fairly low and tend to stay small even as the scale of the data grows. So we have these tightly coupled real-time analytics systems that are fast but expensive as data grows, and these loosely coupled or batch systems, for lack of a better term, uh, that are slower, latency is higher, but cheaper as the size of the data grows. Now, that's a bit of an oversimplification, uh, but in as much as it's true, it's also a terrible bind to place an architect in. You don't want to have to make that trade-off of those two things. As Tony Stark said, is it too much to ask for both? And in the absence of such a system that can do both, what data teams end up doing is adding both systems into their infrastructure. They'll keep the tightly coupled systems just for keeping the very recent data that they need fast access to. And they'll also add the decoupled system, set a very aggressive retention on the tightly coupled system, and then put all of the data into the decoupled systems. In other words, they stand up two systems just to keep the lights on, as if the Lambda architecture didn't already teach us this lesson. Doing everything twice might be twice as bad as doing it once. So to summarize, what we need is a true best of both worlds, where we get the speed of a tightly coupled system, the cost benefits of a decoupled system, without losing the flexibility of using all of this in just a single system. And this is exactly what tiered storage in Star Trek Cloud does. It combines the low query latency of Apache Pino with the storage economics of the decoupled systems for historical data. Older data, again, is almost always less sensitive to query times, but that doesn't mean it can be slow. In fact, you might see uh, a query that would be, say, 50 milliseconds in Pino on the tightly coupled storage architecture uh, might be 250 milliseconds in the with you know the data in the cloud in the tiered storage configuration. So we're making a latency trade-off, but it's not a profound one. And you get to decide what older means for each table in your Pino database on a table by table basis. So 30 days might be what your organization considers historical. You can configure that. Maybe for another table, it's seven. That's all, that's all up to you. Like I said, table by table basis. Uh, and that older data gets pushed into the cloud blob store. The, the newer data stays direct attached on SSDs. Your applications can query that table completely unaware that that distinction even exists. So coming back to our graphs, if we again look at the same data with our ever-increasing retention, with the tiered storage approach, you are able to pick your own point, configure exactly what recent means to you. All of that data stays in the tightly coupled portion. Everything beyond that will go into the decoupled portion, which means that your latency will still continue to be as fast as the tightly coupled version for your recent data. And beyond a point, you'll only see a slightly higher latency and not go all the way to what the latency was in the fully decoupled system. So let's add latency there. And because we're using a hybrid approach, our cost will stay capped even as we keep on increasing retention. Now that graph raises some interesting questions, right, about how we could possibly get the best of both worlds and the latency and cost characteristics of the two systems. We've made another video that dives into the technical details and explains what's going on in the covers if you're interested in that. If you want to try this out for yourself, go to startree.cloud and click through the free trial. If you have more questions, we would invite you to join StarTree Community Slack. Follow this URL right here and join us in that Slack community. Neha and I are there. There are lots of people there who can answer your questions. Lots of other resources there. Definitely encourage you to check that out. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks. Thanks.